Okay, uh, let us get started. This session we are again continuing with SDLC phases. So far we have covered up to coding or development phase. Now today we are going to see about testing phase. Already the developer has done unit testing and uh, we talked about development team doing one, one round of integration testing. Now when we say testing phase, this is actually uh, referred as system testing phase. When we say system testing, if there are uh, programs from P1 to Pn, okay, uh, maybe let us say 80 different programs, right? You need to put all of them together as a single application. Put all programs together and run it as a system. You, you are thinking about a banking system, insurance system or reservation system, a ticket booking system. That means it's not just a one program, it is a collection of programs collection of programs a bundle right if you put all of them together will it work or not right the basketball players may be individually good but if the coordination is not good a lighter team can win them right so it is more important that programs run individually correct and programs talk to each other correct testing that is a system testing and this is done by testers designated independent people uh, they are not developers right if uh, John Tom and Ram are part of the development team totally a different team right Jack Mike and Nancy will be the testers let it be a totally different testing team. When somebody sees totally new, they can have neutral eyes, right? That is very important. Uh, if you have some bias towards this program, hey, I developed this, it will never fail, it's not going to work. So you need to make sure that, yeah, somebody develops. I see that independently and then that's always a chance that I can find a lot of mistakes. There is no bias or leaning towards that the program will work. Try to break it, right? Let the testers try to break it so that before customer breaks it, you break, right? This is very important. Before customer breaks the program let the testers break let all the bugs come out within our company so that by the time it goes to the customers place it comes out without any problems that is called independent testing that is a system testing testing all programs together that's the key now this testing goes in different uh, there's a testing process okay uh, this is uh, well defined and uh, almost uh, every company follows a uh, similar process. I won't say all the processes are exactly the same, but 80% most of the companies follow are very typical of its nature. What does it contain, the process, I mean? First thing is plan, second is execute, the third phase of this or say third step in this testing process is analyze and track, right? There is something called test planning, right? The testers need to know what is to be tested, how it is to be tested, right? That's called a test planning phase within the testing phase. I would say step one of testing phase is test planning. In this, what to test? They call it as uh, test 
scenarios or conditions. Anyway, we are going to see all these test scenarios, conditions, etc. in detail later. Not now. But this is just a nutshell. At least you will be in a position to get to know about the jargons. When I say jargons, it's all technical terms. When you are in the testing field, better to use the same words that all the other testers use. It will be easy for others to understand what you talk. What to test? That means writing test scenarios and conditions and then how to test? This is a detailed uh, documentation. This is called, uh, many companies call it as test case. Some companies call it as test scripts, right? So what to test and how to test if you document that is called test planning. During the execution, uh, you simply run the test case. Run the test, see if it passes or fails. When I say passes, I am expecting some result. Uh, if the result happens in front of your eyes, when you test the software, it is called a pass. Uh, based on the requirements, I expect something, but when I actually do the data, it is giving me a different result. That means it's a fail. So a fail, failure means deviation from expected. How will you get the expected from the specs, right? So the test planning is always based on the SRS. SRS is what the customer wants. Finally, the product should do what the customer wants. If customer wants something and you deliver something, it's not good. So it's a failure. Then when we talk about analyze and track, whenever there is a failure, when a test fails, we file bug reports. Right? Each bug report is like a complaint on the software. Hey, this is not working. Hey, that's not working. Why is it not working is not in our scope. When we are doing the testing, we are not bothered about why it is not working. We simply say, it is supposed to do this. It is not doing this. The normal body temperature should be 98.4 or 98.3 or 98.5 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the expected thing. If the temperature is 101.2 degrees Fahrenheit, then it's a, it's a failure in our system. The body is not accepting something, right? So, at this point of time, we say, hey, the guy has fever. Finished. Story ends there. We are not talking about why he got the fever, what is the root cause of the fever, no. When we do the testing, we analyze it is failing, how many tests are failing, in what areas most of the failures are there, but we are not giving a solution, right? Testers identify problems. Developers rectify the problem. Rectification is not the duty of the testers, right? So let us start with analysis with respect to bug pattern, but not the cause. When you say track, every bug report must be closed, right? I file a complaint, it is not working, and they accept it, yes, as per specs, it should work, and it is not working. Let the developers go find the problem, find the cause, fix the cause, reunit test, reintegration test, give it back to system testing. Again, the testers will retest it. Okay, it's working now. Close. So, the tracking is essentially like a complaint tracking, right? That is called bug tracking. We'll be seeing in detail about these things later. Now, in the testing process, there are three steps, to ex uh, plan, execute, analyze, and track, okay? Once this is done, right, this is called functional testing. Um, 
when we say functional testing that means uh, given some input check output right uh, this is like a cause and effect you give something system does something so that is called the functional testing once the functional testing is done uh, there are something called non-functional testing right this is also part of uh, system testing but non-functional testing contains a whole lot of stuff uh, like performance testing, usability testing, uh, security testing, etc., etc. But non-functional testing is essentially other than simple input and output. Okay, so testing team will conduct functional testing as well as non-functional testing. Okay, once this is done, right, then customer does testing after system testing again you may have to install the software in customers place that we will see in the next session